will never walk alone. God is there with you. Never be discouraged with this life you have to live. God's blessings are a hundredfold with everything you give. It's understanding sin. That's what I want to share about today. Sin can be hard to define. Because there's different things involved. There's many aspects that need to be considered regarding sin. One of the things is that you don't know a person's heart. And we see through a glass darkly. So, sometimes we think we see things, but we really don't understand because we're deceived. We heard bad emotions and feelings and manifestations that you know we don't walk by our feelings we don't walk by that because our feelings can deceive us but sin is missing the mark that God has set to be the standard if you were shooting a bow and arrow you missed a bullseye it's breaking God's word in some way that's what sin is The devil operates in secret, and he likes to keep his ministry and his function and the results of his function secret. Because if he can keep it secret, he can hide it from the believer. And if he can hide it from you, you can live a lifetime dealing with problems and never find a source of the problem because the devil has taken the time to cloak himself. Many times we just deal with the, the fruit of the sin. We deal with the manifestation of the sin. But we never understand what we're dealing with. And many times we try to fix things, but we just wind up dealing with the symptoms, and we never really fix the cause of the symptoms. People don't understand sin, and people don't understand the effects of sin in their lives, and that's the way the devil likes it. He doesn't want you to understand sin, and he doesn't want you to understand the workings of sin in your life. For example, the Bible says, Thou shalt not steal. We know that that's the scripture. Okay? So, God considers stealing a sin. You know the word. You decide to go out and steal something. Okay? That's a sin. That's what a sin is. God says, Don't steal, you steal. And you do it with full knowledge. Actually, that would be called a sin of commission. A sin of commission. A sin of commission is something that we do that we're not supposed to do. Sins of commission are overt sinful acts. And these sins are a violation of God's word. That's one type of sin. But there are other types of sins. There are sins called sins of omission. Now, a sin of omission is something that we know we should do and we're supposed to do, but we don't do it. Okay? So you have a sin of commission. You know the word, but you don't care. You do it anyway. And then you have a sin of omission. You know you should do something, but you refuse to do it. So I like to go to the Word and see in the Scriptures these two types of sins. 
Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely what? So that's God's word concerning this particular tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God says, don't do it. Don't eat of it, right? Okay. Genesis 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did what? What type of a sin would this be? A sin of commission, right? Because they both knew not to eat of the tree, and they decided not to listen to God. We're going to do what we want to do. Okay. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, lie, neither lie one to another. That's God's word. God's word teaches us that we shouldn't steal, don't deal falsely, and we shouldn't what? Lie to one another. First Kings 13, verse 8, And he said unto him, I am a prophet also, as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he, what? Lied, Lied unto him. What type of a sin is that? It's a sin of commission. Should that guy know not to lie? Yeah, the word teaches you. And yet he decided to do what? Lie. And that particular lie ended up in the death of a true prophet of God. See? They are sins of commission. Now let's look at a sin of omission. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 17, To him who knows to do good... And does not do it to him, it is what? Sin. See? What type of a sin is that? That's a sin of omission. You know you should do something. You have the ability to do something. And you know what? You don't do it. You don't do it. Galatians 6 verse 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap. If we faint not. See? This is another where it could be a sin of omission. Because you know what? People just get fed up. They get tired. You know, did you ever get to the place where you might have said to yourself, I don't want to do the word. I don't care what the word says. I don't want to help him. I don't want to forgive her. Bible says, don't get weary. Don't faint. You know you should do something. You have the ability to do something. But you know who stands between you and doing it? You do. Okay? You do. The Bible doesn't handle sin the way men and women handle sin. Today's culture has relegated and redefined sin, endeavoring to sanitize it. The only reason for that is that because people don't want to deal with it. Out of sight, out of mind. This is a senses approach to handling sin. And it's based on man's arrogance and his evil heart. And this type of thinking's foundation is a lie. And just like a lie, it grows. And it doesn't matter how many 25 cent words you use. You can spin it all you want, and all that's going to do is to deceive the hearts of the innocent people. Sin is sin according to what God says, not man. James chapter 3 verse 14 says, But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above but it's earthly, sensual, and what? Devilish. It's devilish. See? This is when you have man redefining what God calls sin. They lie against the truth. Oh, that's not really the way it should be. 
Sin is not something that you can just transform into an acceptable behavior. Just because it won the People's Choice Awards. It's not something that's just a matter of opinion or your culture that you grow up in. Now listen to me. I'm going to teach you something. Sin is very real. And it has very real consequences. Even if you don't recognize it or you don't believe what I'm teaching you. Sin is very real. Let's go to the Word. I'm going to show you this. And hopefully... I can expose the adversary and how he works to deceive you and hurt you. James chapter 4 verse 8 says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. You double-minded. Here God describes sin in very tangible terms. He describes sin as something that makes you unclean. This is why we need to wash our hands of it. We need to wash it off our hands. Sin makes you unclean. Okay? Now, I know you're righteous in Christ and all of that, but you can live a very unrighteous and a very unclean life by the way you act. Isaiah chapter 1 Verse 15, it says, And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear you. Why? It says, Because your hands are full of blood. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do what? Evil. Evil. Here the Lord describes their sin, Israel's sin, as blood. Well, what does blood do? Do you ever get blood on you? Blood stains you. Okay, it stains your hands, it stains your heart. He says that their hands were full of blood. He tells them that they need to wash. They need to repent and change their ways because they're stained. Sin stains a person. And I'm going to tell you another thing sin does. Sin weighs a person down. When a person sins, that sin becomes something tangible in that person's life. And many people never recognize it for what it is. And they go and they suffer the debilitating effects of that sin. That sin becomes a weight that that individual must now carry that eventually crushes them into submission and causes them to collapse. When a person sins, it becomes a weight that that person must now carry because they choose to carry it, because they harden their heart or because they're not aware of it. But nonetheless, that sin is a weight that a person has to carry. You know, remember hearing and teaching, I've got the sins of the world, and i got this one and then the world, and i got this. Oh, there's truth to that. There's truth to it. I'm going to show it to you in the Word. Leviticus 5, verse 1 says, If a soul sin, and hear the voice of swearing, and is a witness whether he had seen or he knows of it, and if he doesn't utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. The word bear is the word nasa, N-A-S-A, nasa. That's the Hebrew word for the English word that's used there for bear. Now, bear in our vernacular can mean I have to bear this again. I have to put up with this. It means to endure. So you can understand bear as enduring something. Okay? So it's not really the best word for our purposes to translate the verse bear. A better word would be carry. Carry. And it's carry away. And that's what NASA means. It means to carry, carry away. That's what it means, among other things. 
Sin here is pictured as a weight that the sinner now must carry around until he repents. Okay? If he doesn't do what's right, then it's a sin and he's going to carry his iniquity with him. It's not going to leave. Because in order for sin to be carried away from you, you have to repent, receive God's forgiveness, and then you're going to see that God does the carrying away. Proverbs 12. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shall bear, shall nasa, shall carry the weight of that sin. You're going to carry. You load it into your shoulder, on top of your shoulder. You hold on to it. You put it in the sack and you throw it over your back. And now, because of that sin, whether it be a sin of omission or a sin of commission, you are tasked with carrying that around. And it weighs you down. Okay. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, they are gone away backwards. They're gone away backwards. Isaiah describes Israel's sin as a heavy, laden with iniquity, something that was laid on them, that they are carrying around. Instead of repenting and asking for forgiveness, they chose to harden their hearts and carry their sin with them. Look at this translation, a New American Standard. Alas, sinful nation, people weighed down with iniquity. Weighed down. See, sin weighs you down. You understand? And the longer you ignore sin in your life, if you do not deal with it, it will eventually deal with you. And it will burden you down. It will weigh you down. Israel was like that. They were hard-hearted. They were cocky. They were arrogant. They refused to confess to God and receive his forgiveness. So you know what they chose to do? They chose to remain acting the way they acted, doing the things that they did, and holding on to their sin. And everywhere they went, they carried their sin with them. The NIV of Isaiah 5.18 now says this, Woe to those who draw sin along with cords of deceit and wickedness as with cart ropes. See? Israel could have humbled their hearts. They could have confessed their stubbornness and their sin. And God would have carried it away from them. But you know what Israel decided to do? Israel decided not to change the way they were doing business. They decided to live the way they continued to live. And in doing that, they were holding on to their sin. Funny thing about sin, it's just like a lie. If you ever tell a lie... When you're in that situation, you got to tell another lie, and you got to tell another lie, and you got to tell another, and you got to remember all the lies you're told. And it just keeps growing, one lie after another after another. Sin's like this. When you ignore sin, when you refuse to straighten your life out and line it up with the Word of God, sin keeps growing. And Israel here was so stubborn that their sin got so heavy that they couldn't carry it anymore. The Word of God says that they had to draw it along with cords of deceit and wickedness as cart ropes. It was too heavy to lump over their shoulder, 
So they took cords and they wrapped it around it. And everywhere they went, you know what they did? They drug it behind them. You see it? And that's what happens with us. When we harden our hearts and we become bitter, okay? The sin weighs us down, weighs us down, weighs us down. And you would think we would have enough brains to go to God and say, help me, Lord. But because of our pride, because of our arrogance, because of our hardness of heart, we don't. We cover it. We cloak it. We make excuses for it. We paint it with pretty pictures and put the picture over it. And then it gets so heavy, we can't carry it no more. And you would think at that point in your life, you would know to do something with it and seek God's forgiveness. But you know what? Because of the hardness of our hearts, and now our hearts have gotten to the place where they're blinded, we just accommodate our sin. So we get some ropes, and we tie it around the sins, and we start dragging them along, and dragging them along, and dragging them along. And people, that is no way to live. It's no way to live. Psalm 32, verse 1 says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Whose sin is covered. The word forgiven in that verse is the word nasa. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose transgression is what? Carried away carried away. You see, instead of carrying and dragging your sins around with you, David said, you want to be blessed? Repent, get forgiveness, and God will come and take that burden off of you and carry that sin away. You understand? God carried David's sin, so he no longer needed to carry it himself. And because we can't see sin, and because we don't understand its effects in our lives, we feel the effects in our lives, and we attempt to deal with them, but for the most part, we fail. The best we can do at times is attempt to deal with sin's symptoms. Seldom do we get to the root cause and deal with the sin. Confess it. Let God take it away, receive his forgiveness, and lighten us of our burden. Lighten us of our burden. So what are some of the symptoms of sins that we deal with instead of dealing with the root cause of the sin? Well, anxiety. Do you know that anxiety can be a symptom of sin? Bible says I'm going to show it to you. As a matter of fact, Carmen spoke it earlier while he was opening up. Anxiety can be a symptom of sin. Why? Now, I didn't say everyone that has anxiety is a sinful person. What I said was anxiety can be a symptom of sin. If your anxiety is caused by this, it's a symptom of sin. Bible says don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and the supplication, petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. If your anxiety is caused because you don't trust God, because you're not going to God, because you're not right with God, okay, then anxiety is a symptom of your sin. And you know what? You can take as many pills as you want, and all you're going to do is treat the symptom. And you'll never get to the root cause. Amen? Another symptom of sin, stress. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to juggle this. I got to handle that. I got the kids. I got work. I got la di la di la di la di la Stress can be a fruit of your sin or of sin. Specifically, if your stress is coming because of this, you got a problem. Bible says, seek the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Here it says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. 
If your priorities are backwards, you understand, and you're seeking other things first, and you got other things before God, and you got fear in your life, and you don't trust God, and you're not doing what you should do as far as the word goes, and you got stress in your life, and you're trying to deal with the stress, which is the fruit of the sin of not seeking God first, you'll never get it. Know why? Because a spiritual man sees with a spiritual eye, and that's the only way you're going to see sin. The senseless man doesn't see that way. Natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. They're what? Foolishness unto him. So they're never going to think, oh, wait a minute, I got stress in my life. Maybe it's because I got my priorities jacked up. You, you understand? So what we do is we take pills, we take classes, we do meditation, we repeat phrases, and you know what? You never get to the root of the cause, and the root of the cause is that you're not putting God first. And you got stress. No wonder you got stress. But see how sneaky the devil is? He hides that from you. So what you have is a senseless manifestation of stress that has a spiritual root cause of not putting God first. That's a pretty good trick. How about this one? Fear. Fear can be a symptom or a result of a sin in your life. Once again, I did not say everybody that has a fear is a sinful person. What I'm saying is it's possible that the fear that you are experiencing in your life and situations that you are dealing with is the result of a sin in your life. What sin would that be? This sin, don't fear, only what? Believe. believe. You're not believing God. You're not trusting God. You're not having faith that God handled everything in Christ. See? And when you get to be like that, and you start to get all these fears about, what if this happens, or what if that happens? Well, you see, the reason why you got that fear is not because of the boogeyman. The reason why you got that fear is because you're not believing. You need to get back in the Word. You need to get back into fellowship. Trust God. Believe God. You see this? But the devil doesn't want you to understand this. He doesn't want you to understand that maybe something in your life that you're experiencing is rooted in the spiritual realm. And what's the world do? All the world does is they come up with programs, they come up with pills, they come up with needles, they come up with big fancy words. You know, if a doctor don't know what you got, he'll, he'll just throw a fancy word on it. God forbid he should look like he doesn't know what he's talking about. But I'd want to tell you something. If what he's talking about is rooted in the spiritual realm, he'll never hit it. And he will use you as his guinea pig, and you will take all those drugs just to become worse. Oh, does that say that in the Word? A woman had this issue for X amount of years, and she took all those drugs that the doctors prescribed her, and she always was the what? Worse. Nothing new under the sun. See, the weight of sin cannot be seen with the sense's eye. However, it's very real, and it can be felt. This is why when you believe God's Word, and you accept His will... God can carry away your sin. Here you go. Did you ever say this? Or did you ever hear someone say this? I felt like a big weight was just lifted off my chest. Well, yes. That's right. You know why? Because it's real. You can't see it, but you can feel it. You can experience it. And when you feel that relief, I can breathe again. See? But what you don't understand is sometimes those things are rooted in the spirit realm. They have spiritual causes. And if it's a sin, it's got to be repented of. You've got to get God's forgiveness. And then you know what God comes? He comes, picks it up, carries it away. And you know what you do? <sighs> I feel like a weight's just been lifted off me. Amen? You see, that's, that's what you're experiencing. But what I'm showing you is it's got its roots in the spiritual realm. Who wants to be like this guy? That's dumb, right? But this is what we do. Why in the world would you want to carry around your sins in a bag? Right? Everywhere you go. 
I got to go to the car. I forgot my bag. Hold on. Why don't you let God carry him for you? But there's the alternative. You know what the alternative to letting God carry him for you? You dig your heels in. And eventually you harden your heart. And you become so numb to sin that you no longer can see the truth. And you no longer can feel anything. See, that's the alternative to doing it God's way. This is what the scripture talks about. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. This is talking about believers. You can't depart from the faith unless you have the faith. Okay? These doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, these people having their conscience seared with what? A hot iron. That's what happens when you dig your heels in, harden your heart against sin. You get to the place where you can't even hear the truth anymore. You can't understand the truth. It's shut off. It's seared with a hot iron. And that's what they're doing in our culture, in our world today. These kids today, you tell them something, they've got this whole thing going on. I can be a girl, I can be a boy, I can be a cocker spaniel. No, you can't. No, you can't. But their minds are seared. And you know who you can thank for that? The colleges of our country. And the government who funds those colleges. The people who are supposed to protect and educate our children are the ones that are sending them down the sewer right to the pit of hell. That's who you can thank. Don't be like Israel. The first guy, he had a lump sack on. He could carry it. But that guy got so many sins now, he's got to drag it. The sin's not going to do anything for you. Sin of pride, sin of ego, sin of stubbornness. That's not going to do anything for you. Don't accommodate it. Don't make a chain or a rope so you can just bring it everywhere you can in your life. Don't you want to be free? Give it to God. Let him carry it away. And just live life and be happy. See? Don't take your sin everywhere you go and drag it behind you. Wherefore, lay apart every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. It clings so closely by. Hebrews 12 once says that. That's how we get rid of it. You've got to lay it away. Just let it go. Give it to God. And this is how you give it to God. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all what? That's it. Get quiet with the Father sometime today and ask him to reveal to you anything that you need to get straight in your life. The Bible says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. See? He loves you very much and he'll take care of you. Get rid of all that junk you've been carrying around. Cut the ropes. Give it to God. Let him carry it. And breathe the fresh air of the Spirit of God. And be thankful and live as children of the Most High God. That's where that verse is. For forgiveness, it's in 1 John. The first beginning of the verse, if you walk in darkness, you deny your sin. You harden your heart. But if you're going to walk in the light, you confess it and God makes you squeaky clean. Don't dig your heels in. Don't deny your sin. Don't carry it around. Give it to the Father. You need to... And you deserve to live a happy, free life. Healthy life. God wants you to. He wants you to be a happy person. You know? That's what he wants. He sees you as children. And that's what he wants for you. Give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. And his love endures forever. Okay? God will carry that burden away from you if you would just let him. So you see, sin is very real, and it weighs you down. And you can't see it, but you've experienced it. 
You've all experienced it. Give it to God. There's no reason to live like that and be a happy camper. Amen? Amen. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, that we can understand and that the devil no longer tricks us in these areas. Thank you that your word always works and with you we always win. Thank you because of what Jesus did, not of any merit of ourselves. Thank you for listening to Chapter and Verse Ministry. We have newsletters, articles, podcasts, and videos posted on our website at www.cvm.church. We also post videos regularly on Rumble and on BitChute. Don't forget to like our video and to hit the bell icon if you want to know when another video is coming out. You know it's been so good to see God living in your life. Love is shining on your face and he lights your radiant eyes If there's just one message Before the song is through It's that you will never walk alone God is there with you Never be discouraged with this life you have to live. God's blessings are a hundredfold with everything you give. Much more than all this world's riches is this life He gave to you. And with His love inside you, there is nothing you can't do. And even in the darkest night, when your mind is full of fear, you can reach out your hand to God and know that He is there. The God of peace be with you, so be always filled with love. And as you walk along the way, Keep your thoughts above Wherever you may go Whatever you may do You will never walk alone God is there with you You will never walk alone Because He is there God is there with you, God is there with you.